Hello there and welcome to Top Channel 101. So today we're going to be making this uh, Windows 11 cloth animation inside Blender. And uh, yeah, this is uh, what we're going to be doing. Uh, I've already rendered it out and yeah, simple stuff. But uh, let's see how to set it up. Okay, um, uh, I guess I, I should do a quick breakdown and then we can do a quick step-by-step -step tutorial then. Uh, so this is uh, the setup I have. You can see the lighting is very simple. I have this here, place back like that. Let me first pause this. And uh, you can see that uh, my setup is very, very simple. I have um, uh, basically a circle that has been distorted a bit and then I have an array uh, with a count of 10 to just duplicate this in the Z axis like that with some spacing. And uh, I give this a cloth system and I have the center of this cloth pinned uh, in the shape key. So if I go to the cloth settings, you will see that uh, in the shape, I have a group uh, that is just a selection of these middle points that has been pinned uh, to that surface. And then I have uh, this wind force uh, that blows wind up. And then I have uh, a turbulence force somewhere here. I like that uh, and uh, what else what else I think for the most part give this uh, self collision so let's jump in and uh, do this quickly uh, I want to keep this up below 10 minutes uh, so let's jump in okay so for thing first let's start with a circle F to fill it and then if you hit shift R you can repeat the steps as many times as you want yeah so something like that this is sufficient and uh, I can have this center that says selected I'll go to the vertex group, set up a new vertex group, and uh, then set up a new cloth, uh, a cloth system. And I uh, see if I hit play, everything falls down. I uh, can go to the shape, uh, pin this, pin the group I've created, and uh, uh, this should just fall down like that. I'm going to shade smooth so that things look smoother. And now things just fall down like that. But uh, you can see the cloth is intersecting with itself. So we're going to go to. Um, collisions under self collision turn that on then now we shouldn't see any intersections uh, but so we also want to reduce the distance to something like 0 0.002 so that the collision distance is very sm small okay now we want to add a force a wind force going up like that push this maybe to 500 and uh, so that uh, it uh, counters the the gravitational force what that does is that uh, it is it's kind of fighting with the gravitational force giving us uh, these nice waves in the cloth now the other thing we need how like uh, in the example we have a lot of uh clothes so what i'm going to do is just uh, use an array array like this have this in the uh, you want to use uh, actually let me just drag this up and uh you don't want to use relative offset. You can use constant. You can use constant offset. Uh, like that. But uh, I used object offset uh, by using an empty. Just make sure that uh, the empty is not scaled or rotated. And uh, it's in the same position as your cloth. Uh, so you just select that and uh, set an ob object offset. Select it. And uh, when you move this up, you create an offset. So the distance between the empty and the original object is the offset. But uh, if you want, you can also move this on the x-axis a bit uh, to offset that in different axes. But I don't want to do that. So we have that. Uh, if we play back, we get some nice looking waves already. See how simple that is? But I, I don't want the offset to be too much. So I'm just going to come in here, uh, select my empty and just pull them just so they are very close like that. Ah, okay, I think this is good enough, but uh, we can also add some turbulence to this. So turbulence, a, a turbulence force, I'll uh, just give it a f uh, strength of, let's say 500 as well, maybe some noise as well. And the size could be two, uh, maybe 0.5. You have to play with your own settings. And then that should also give us more waves within the cloth uh, like that. And maybe, let me, increase this to something like 10,000 so that I can show you how this is affecting the cloth. You see, it's just amplifying the, the waves we have. So let me just put this back to, I think 2,000 might be good. Yeah, it gives you some nice waves, but uh, you don't want it to be too strong at over, 
to overpower the other forces we have in the scene. Now we might also want to increase the offset. And sometimes if you see this blue or purple line here, it means that uh, your changes, any changes you have done are not being calculated. It has baked the simulation up to that uh, purple area. If it doesn't go away when you make a change, it means that uh, what you're previewing is still the old animation. So you need to change something in here so that it clears that cache. And now we have re-simulated everything. And you can see now it has added our changes in into uh, the simulation. Now we can add more resolution by just adding a multi-resolution modifier above this. Just use the su subdivide or simple, whatever you, you want to use. And uh, when you add subdivisions to your cloth, uh, if you go to the cloth settings, you can see that uh, uh, the mass of the cloth is calculated by, by how many vertices you have. So each vertex has a mass of 0.1. So that's why you see it's no longer jumping up uh, so if you reduce the this to 0.1, it means that uh, you're reducing the mass of every vertex and uh, that should uh, make it uh, lighter. The more vertices you are you have in your in your cloth, the heavier the cloth is going to be. That's why you saw that uh, when we added a subdivisions, it became a bit uh, heavier and that didn't fly around. So yeah, so we have some nice waves like that. Now you just have to bake the animation play around with the camera and uh, then what I did after that I just added a subdivision surface subdivision surface modifier uh, to, to make things smooth and uh, then what I, I also added a solidify modifier to add some thickness and uh, and I was good to go with the material and the lighting so uh, let's do the lighting let me just get a nice pier I think let's go with this. I'm just going to set up a camera here. Lighting. I use cycles for this. GPU denoising on. I'm going to add a background. Uh, this is just going to be a simple plane rotated. I'm just going to also let me turn on random colors here. Push it in the back. A scale it up. Our project files are going to be in the description. I, if you're a patron, I should be able to get the project file for this on my patron page. And uh, if you're a YouTube member as well, uh, the project files are going to be there. But uh, if you don't want to subscribe to Patreon or my YouTube membership, but still want to get the project file, it, you can also find it on my Gumroad page. Anyway, so this is what we have. Uh, let's set up the lighting. I'm go to, going to go to Cycles here. The thing I'm going to do is turn off the world light or environment lighting, set it to zero. I'm going to add an area light uh, so that is our directional light and I'm just going to rotate it like that. So we have some directional light coming there. Maybe increase its power to a uh, hundred like that uh, this area is uh, a bit too dark so I'm just going to duplicate this rotate it bit like that so it acts as our key light uh, this is going to be maybe 10 so this back is uh, not too dark maybe three like that and maybe I can make this stronger like 300 now I don't want the background to be affected by this light so I'm just going to push it way back like that and I'm just going to duplicate one of these area lights and uh, just clear rotation and uh, use it to light up our background and uh, it's going to be let's try uh, yeah 500 give it a blue uh, light and uh, maybe give this background also the same color bluish and uh, for the material this is going to be easy just set up a new material here blue and uh, this if you look at uh, the reference images or even the render i have here you see that uh, there is some translucence so let's do that uh translucence you can even use sub subsurface scattering uh, but uh, just wanted to keep things simple so i'm just going to use translucence for this so yeah a bit of translucence and uh, you can also separate the background from the foreground by using a rim light like that so something like this maybe this is should be a bit powerful uh, sometimes you you can just first turn off all the other lights to see the impact of the light you're adding yeah that's it all you have you left to do is uh, just animate the camera and you're good And speaking of clothes, let's talk about the best cloth add-on for Blender. 
I'm kidding, but uh, yeah, this is uh, my own add-on called uh, the Cloth Library. It's a collection of different clothes uh, that uh, you can use for your characters. Getting it supports the channel a lot, and uh, I will really, really appreciate uh, the support. So yeah, this is how it works. Very, very simple interface, very intuitive, and uh, comes with a library of clothes. I'm always updating the content and adding more stuff. All links are going to be provided in the description. Thank you.